Good day, everyone. Welcome to this subject, the contemporary world. Again, I'm Miss Novi Dibaligot, your instructor. We are now in our lesson seven, and our lesson is about Asian regionalism. So in this lesson, you are expected to differentiate between regionalization and globalization, identify the factors leading to a greater integration of Asian region, Analyze how different Asian states confront the challenges of globalization and regionalization. So, regionalism is an expression of a common sense of identity, implementation of institutions that express a particular identity, and it shapes the collective action within the geographical region. Asia is the new stabilizing engine of global economic growth. It greatly influences the world since it plays uh, the vital role in the global economic uh, leadership. So, Asian regionalism is therefore the product of economic interaction. It helps the region to grow richer and closer together. And it focused on finding new and flexible forms of cooperation and regional initiatives are intended to complement global relationships. So in short, Asian regionalism um, is a cooperation or integration of Asian countries for economic or global economic progress. So how Asian economy, economies are connected? So Asian economies are connected through first trade. So this trade... Um, at the beginning of the 21st century, nearly all countries were responding to globalization of production by promoting exports and opening domestic markets to international competition to varying degrees. So Japan, for example, has assumed a prominent role in Asian trade and South Korea, China, Taiwan have also traded more heavily with other Asian countries. So over the years, China and ASEAN have enjoyed um, growing political mutual trust and strong regional economic reciprocity, which have all played a significant part in the growth of bilateral trade and economic cooperation. So that is according to according to Qian Feng, the director of the research department of the National Strategy Institute at Tsinghua University. Um, ASEAN now becomes China's largest trading partner in 2020 with 7% growth. So there has been effort of the part of Asian countries to improve their trading position by also joining organizations of commodity producers. So for example, the most prominent and occasionally successful of, successful of these groups is the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries or OPEC, which is dominated by the major oil producing countries of Southwest Asia. So the ASEAN also has fostered joint economic ventures among its member states to reduce tariff trade barriers. Second is Asian economies are connected through uh, financial transactions. So economic theory, according to Gemma Estrada and Dong Yun Park and Arif Aramayandi in 2010, Ten, economic theory suggests that sound and efficient financial systems like banks, equity markets, and bank markets, which channel the capital to its most productive users, are beneficial for economic growth. So Asia has been the world's largest regional banking market for a decade generating pre-tax profits in excess of $700 billion and accounting for 37% of global banking profit pools in 2018. So we estimate that as incomes continue to rise and the middle class grows to include two-thirds of Asian households, personal financial assets in the region, will total to $69 trillion by 2025, which is representing approximately three quarters of the global total. 
So that was according to Jacob Dahl, Erwin Nam, and Joy Deep Seng Gupta. Third, Asian economies are connected through direct investments. Okay, direct investment. So it is an investment in the form of controlling ownership in a business in one country by an entity based in another country. So in 2019, China and Hong Kong China were the largest foreign direct investment recipients, attracting 38% of the total foreign direct investment inflows to the region. And Japan was the largest source of investment from the region in 2019, which is responsible for the 42% of the regional outward foreign direct investment. As the cross-border, uh, as the cross-border investments, Asia emerges as a major global investors, uh, investor while it continues to attract seizable foreign directive in direct investments or FDI. And in 2018, 43.1% of global inward foreign direct investment went to Asia, creating around 900,000 jobs. The fourth Asian economies are connected uh, through economic relationships. So in Asia, regional economic integration has mainly focused on trade in goods and services and to some extent investment. So regarding trade in goods, most intra-ASEAN trade or trade between ASEAN and its six uh, FTA partners, China, Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and India, are already involved uh, already involves tariffs that are very close to zero. So the highest level of intra-regional trade within Asia is the is in the East Asia. So the ten ASEAN countries plus South Korea, Japan, and China, and also in Southeast Asia, or example the ASEAN countries. In addition. There has been a high share of intra-regional investment in Asia, with the five largest investors, the Japan, China, South Korea, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Fifth, Asian economies are connected uh, through labor and tourist flows. So in view of the division of labor that existed between the colonial countries and the metropolitan powers in colonial days, it is not surprising that until the 1970s, the economies of the independent states or countries in Asia were more competitive. So according to the most recent International Labor Organization estimates in 2007, there were 163.8 million migrant workers in the world. Asia and the Pacific host 20.4% of these migrants. The Arab states states also have the highest proportion of uh, migrant workers to all workers which is 40.8 percent and host 13.9 percent of migrant workers worldwide while most of them from southeast and south asia so there are other key migration corridors in the region including to and within the association of southeast asian uh, region or the ASEAN region. So moreover, as clearly illustrated in the United Nations World Trade Organization's compendium of best practices and recommendations for ecotourism in Asia and the Pacific, ecotourism has become an important niche um, market in the region, helping to extend the benefits of tourism to poorer local communities in less developed con tourism countries, such as Cambodia, Philippines, Vietnam, and Sri Lanka, as well as in less developed rural areas of more established tourism destinations like Thailand and Indonesia. And lastly, Asian economies are connected through technology. So the digital economy refers to a broad range of economic activities that use digitized information and knowledge as key factors of production. 
So the internet, cloud computing, big data, fintech, and other new digital technologies are used to collect, store, analyze, and share information digitally and transform social interactions. So Asia's digital transformation is already having a massive impact on the region's economies. So Asia's e-commerce transactions account for 25% of the business-to-consumer market in the world, led by the People's Republic of China. So where companies like Alibaba and Tencent have grown at a breakneck pace. Financial technologies have also given rise to the new ways of delivering financial services in Asia, particularly in facilitating payment and lending. So it promotes financial inclusions in many developing Asian countries. Find tech-based lending in Asia reach uh, 102.8 billion dollars in 2015 while the proliferation of technologies further improved the efficiency of the payment system and strengthened asia's position as the largest payment market in the world further digitized network and intelligent information and communication technologies or icts enable modern economic activities to be more flexi flexible, agile, and smart. So, what is the importance of this Asian regionalism? So, it is important since it helps to sustain the region's growth, it underpins the region's stability, it redu reduces inequality, it marshals common response to major challenges and sustain global economic progress so um, economic and political cooperation is not yet so well established in the asia pacific region so as it is in europe so many states believe that it is important to keep their own distinct economic and political profile so that said diverse regional cooperation structures are emerging in this region too. So according to Federal Foreign Office, there are uh, different regional organizations in Asia. So let's start with the ASEAN um, organization. So what is this ASEAN? So the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN was founded in 1967 and now it has 10 member states the Brunei Darussalam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. So cooperation in ASEAN to date has focused on economic integration. So the ASEAN Charter provides a foundation for the further development of ASEAN community and gives ASEAN a legal personality. And it also records the ASEAN state's commitment to the rule of law, democracy, and good governance, and envisages the formation of a human rights body that's according to uh, ASEAN.org. The next organization is the Asia-Europe meeting. So... According to the official website of ASEA Europe Meeting, it is an interregional dialogue forum for multilateral exchange between Europe and Asia in the spheres of politics, business, and culture. So the grouping was founded in 1996 at the initiative of Singapore and France, which has expanded from its original membership to tw from 26 to include 53 members today. So on the European side, these are the 28 European Union member states, the EU, Switzerland, and the Norway. On the ASEAN si As Asian side, they comprise China, Japan, India, South Korea, Brunei, um, Indonesia, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, the ASEAN Secretariat, um, Pakistan, Australia, New Zealand, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Russia, and the Kazakhstan. The next organization is the APEC, or the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. 
So the this was founded in 1989 on the initiative of Japan and Australia, and it aims to strengthen the economic growth in the Asia Pacific region, not least by dismantling dismantling tariffs and other barriers to trade. At their summit in Bogor, Indonesia in 1994, the APIC countries agreed to set up a free trade area within the economic community. Summits at the head of state and government level are held annually with the participation of the business executives. So climate, climate protection appeared on APIC's agenda for the first time at the 5th 15th summit in Sydney in 2007. So currently, APIC has 21 member economies. So these are Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, uh, China, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Peru, the Philippines, the Russian Federation, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, the United States, and Vietnam. So together, these economies account for some 55% of global gross domestic product and some 45% of the global trade. So the next is the SAARC or the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. So according to uh, the SARC, Dash sec da, dot org. It was founded in 1985 by Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. And Af Afghanistan has been the eighth member since 2007. So together with China, Japan, South Korea, and the United States, the EU, the European Union also attended the SARC summit as an observer for the first time in 2007. The SARC itself has had observer status at the United Nations since uh, December 2004. So the SARC or the Sa uh, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation concentrates on economic and trade issues. So the agreement to create the South Asian Free Trade Area or the SAFTA which entered into force in 2006 marked a milestone in regional economic cooperation. So the SAFTA has been ratified by all member states. So the SAARC's remit extends to cooperation in seven key areas, including agriculture and rural development, environment and forestry, human resources, development, and trans trans transport. So the next organization is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So the SEO emerged in 2001 from the Shanghai Five, set up in 1996. So the original five members were China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, the Russian Federation, and the Tajikistan. Uh, Uzbekistan joined also in 2001. Mongolia, India, Iran, and Pakistan became observers in 2004 and 2005, and the Belarus and Sri Lanka dialogue partners in 2009. At the Shanghai Co uh, Corporation uh, Cooperation Organization Summit in Be Beijing in June 12, 2012, Afghanistan, which had attended the SEO Summit as a special guest for several years, was granted observer status and Turkey also obtained dialogue partner status. Turkmenistan, however, is not a member of the SEO on the grounds of its permanent neutrality, but it attends the summit as a special guest of honor. So the SEO has held observer status in the United Nations since 2004. So furthermore, this is SCO maintains cooperation agreements with the Commonwealth of Independent States or CIS and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or the ASEAN organization. So the SCO's original focus was on security cooperation in the member states border regions. Next is the RCEP or the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. 
So this is a free trade agreement between Asia Pacific nations of Australia, Brunei, Cambodia, China, Indonesia, Japan, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, New Zealand, the Philippines, Singapore, South Korea, Thailand, and Vietnam. So the 15 member countries account for about 30% of the world's population, which is 2.2 billion people, and 30% of global gross domestic product, which is $26.2 trillion as of 2020, making it the biggest trade block in history. So unifying the pre-existing bilateral agreements between the 10 member ASEAN and five of its major partners, the RCEP, was signed on November 15, 2020 at the virtual ASEAN summit, which was hosted by Vietnam. And it took effect after 60 days. And the RCEP is the first free trade agreement between China, Japan, and South Korea. So three of the four largest economies in Asia. Several, uh, several analysts predicted that it would offer significant economic gains for signatory nations as well as pull the economic center of gra gravity back towards Asia, with China poised to take the lead in writing trade rules for the region, leaving the U.S. behind in economic and political affairs. So reactions from others were neutral or negative, with some analysts saying that the economic gains from the trade deal would be modest. So the RCEP has been criticized for ignoring labor, human rights, and environmental sustainability issue. And last, uh, no, not the least, uh, next is the Pacific Island Forum. So this association or this group um was founded in Wellington in 1971 so it proves uh it provides a forum for dialogue and cooperation on politics economics environment culture education and social affairs so moreover this uh, forum is the only multilateral forum in the pacific region to also look at the security policy aspects. So the PIF 16 member states are Australia, the Cook Islands, Fiji, Kiribati, the Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Nauru, New Zealand, New, Palau, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Samoa, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. So the EU is one also of the 14 dialogue partners of the Pacific Island Forum. So other member or other dialogue partners of PIF are China, France, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, and also the United States. So next is the ASEAN plus three and the ASEAN plus six. So ASEAN plus three is a forum that functions as a coordinator of quote cooperation cooperation between Asian and the three East Asian nations of China, South Korea, and Japan. So the government leaders, ministers, and senior officials from the 10 members of the ASEAN and the three East Asian states consult on an increasing range of issues. So the ASEAN plus three is the latest development of Southeast Asian East Asia regional cooperation. So in the past, proposals such as South Korea's call for an Asian common market in 1970 and Japan's 1980 suggestion for an Asian network have been made to bring closer to regional cooperation. ASEAN Plus 3 was the first of attempts for further integration to improve the existing ties of Southeast Asia with the East Asian countries of China, Japan, and South Korea. This was followed by even large, larger East Asia Summit or EAS, which include Asian Plus 3, as well as India, Australia, and New Zealand. So this group acted as a prere uh, prerequisite for the planned East Asia community 
which was supposedly patterned after the European community, which is now transformed into European Union. So the ASEAN Imminent Persons Group was created to study the policies, possible success and failure. So the group became ASEAN plus six with Australia, New Zealand and India and stands as the linchpin of Asia Pacific's economic, political, security, social, cultural architecture, as well as the global economy. And codification of the relations between these countries has seen progress through the development of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, uh, which is a free trade agreement involving the 15 countries of the ASEAN plus six, excluding the India. So the RCEP would, in part, allow the members to protect local sectors and give more time to comply with the aim for developed country members. So the economies in this region that have not joined the RCEP are Hong Kong, India, Macau, uh, North Korea, and Taiwan. So next organization is the CPTPP or the Comprehensive and progressive agreement for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So it is also known as TPP-11. So it is a trade agreement. So between countries, um, Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, and Vietnam. So this agreement evolved from the Trans-Pacific Partnership or the TPP which never entered into force due to the withdrawal of the United States. So the 11 signatories have combined economies representing 13.4% of the global gross domestic product at approximately 13.5 trillion US dollar, making the CPTPP one of the world's largest free trade areas by gross domestic product. So along with the United States, Mexico, Canada agreement, the European single market and the regional comprehensive economic partnership. So lastly, the ASEAN Regional Forum, which is promoting peace and security through dialogue and cooperation in Asia Pacific. So the ARF was founded in 1994 following a decision by the ASEAN foreign ministers. So the ARF deals with security issues and it's the only institutionalized security policy discussion forum in the Asia uh, Pacific region. And along with the 10 ASEAN member states, another 16 countries, Australia, Bangladesh, um, Canada, China, India, Japan, Mongolia, New Zealand, North Korea, Pakistan, Papua New Guinea, Russian Federation, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Timor-Leste, and the United States currently participate as well as the European Union. For the European Union, the A ARF is the important forum in the Asia-Pacific for advocating this, its security policy concepts and promoting confidence building and preventive um, diplomacy. So those are the different Asian groups and associations in the Asia. Uh, in the Asia. So what are the benefits of uh, this Asian regionalism to Asia? So of course, it linked the competitive strengths of its diverse economy Second, it creates regional mechanism. Third, uh, effective global solutions. It connects the region's capital market. Fifth, it pulls the region's foreign uh, exchange reserves. And sixth, it cooperates in setting exchange rate and macroeconomic policies. Seven, it, it exercises leadership in global decision making. Eight, it build connected infrastructure and collaborative on inclusive development. Nine, it generate productivity gains, new ideas and competition. Ten, diversify the sources of global demand. 
11, it contributes to the efficiency and stability of global financial markets. And also it stabilized the world economy. It diminished the risk posed by global in imbalances. And 14, it provides leadership. So indeed, uh, this Asian regionalism has brought greater impact in the region's growth and development. So in 2009 for, uh, 2001, for example, India has the one of the fastest growing service sectors in the world with an annual growth rate of 9% above. In 2010 also, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, the Uni United Arab Emirates, and Kuwait registered the high in, good, in gross domestic product in the years. And in 2012 to 2013, the Philippines managed to grow at rates at with par with China. And in 2013, China opened its Shanghai Free Trade Zone, which, which then in 2015, China surpassed the United States and the European Union to become the world's largest economy. And in 2019, to 2020, the United States of America is no longer the strongest country when it comes in economy. China is now in the top one. So as you have seen in our statistic chart, according to International Monetary Fund, China has the biggest gross domestic uh, products in the world. Here, followed by U.S., India, uh, Asian countries, India, Japan, and also Indonesia, and many more. So, indeed, in 2020, uh, accordingly, Asia's GDP will overtake the GDP of the rest of the world if combined. So by 2030, the region is expected to contribute roughly at least 60% of the global growth. So Asia Pacific will also be responsible for the overwhelming majority of 90% of the 2.4 billion new members of the middle class, which is entering the global economy. So the bulk of that growth will come from the developing markets of China, India, and throughout Southeast Asia. And it will give rise to a host of new decisions for businesses, governments, and the NGOs. So however, this Asian regionalism has faces challenges. No? It has risk. First is the global demand and financial can be compromised. Second, financial reserve, res reversals and economic slowdowns. New health or security threats could also make the flow of people and goods more difficult and expensive. Environmental damage could also result in radical changes in economic policies. And social st instability could generate tension uh, and uncertainty that overwhelms economic progress. So, um, the Asia's econo economy growth today, according to Asian Develop Development Bank, uh, the regional economic growth in developing Asia will decline sharply in 20, 2020. So, this is due to the effects of the novel coronavirus or the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, before it recovering in 2021, according to Asian Development Outlook in 2020, all of developing Asia's sub-regions will see growth weaken this year because of the glo uh, weak global demand. And in some economies, because of domestic outbreaks and containment policies and sub-regions that are more economically open like East and Southeast Asia or tourism-dependent like the Pacific, will be hard hit. 
So, economic activity, however, in Pacific subregion is expected to contract by 0.3% in 2020 before recovering to 27 in 2021. So, that would be all about our topic Asian regionalism. So, see you next time. Have a good day, everyone.